there's been some sleeping consciousness, some push, to, uh, push down consciousness that it needs to come up. Even when you have a cut, you, you want to get it out to the air and the sunshine and, and let it mend. And we have to do the same with our consciousness. We have to let that up and out. This truth is deep down inside of us and, and it's coming up. I mean, I just went to the volcanoes. They were showing the inside of the earth the molten lava, hot, the core. This molten lava just kept pushing up and pushing up and pushing up. And of course it would hit the water and it would cool and become rock, but it would just build layers and layers over hundreds of thousands of years and then up, 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 up above the surface. That's kind of like the light in our mind. I was like, look at that, it's even light. It's like this light, a light yellow color, like a light, and it's just pushing up through the crust and I thought, pushing up through the crust of consciousness, and I thought, that's the story of my life. I have had, there's some kind of light energy in my mind that just wants to erupt. And it just, no, I believe I'm a human being. Take this. No, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm, a, I'm masculine. No, you're not. I'm feminine. No, you're not that either. You're, it's just blasting up. You know, I am a Course in Miracles teacher. No, you're not. Anything, any concept that we can hold on to, any self-concept, any object that we can identify with, this molten lava, this light of mind is pushing up and it is just erupting. Once you start to realize that that's what's going on, you can just give in to the light. You, you no longer would try to protect it, hold it in, keep it down, keep it under. It's taken me this little character has been in 29 countries, and I've been going around giving these Chautauquas for over 25 years, over a quarter of a century of letting the body be used by the light, for the light. Mm -hmm. And you know what that will do? That will get you happy. <laughs> if you do this for a quarter of a century, it, it can take an instant. But you don't have to go the route that I did. I, tell, I always tell people, listen, it's not a matter of time. We're here to save time, we're here to collapse time, we're here to bring the Alpha and the Omega together in one beautiful holy instant. And we're going for it. And, and there's nothing that can stop us. What happens when 2,000 degree lava comes into contact with a mountain or a hill? It just goes through, <laughs> through the mountain. I'm telling you, this stuff is hot. <laughs> and this light in our mind is hot too. It can just sizzle anything. You think you got a major grievance, a block, or oh, whatever it is, I got HIV, or I got cancer, or this and this. Oh yeah, the light's like, oh yeah. <laughs> You're gonna stop me with this cancer, the C word? No. So that's what we're getting into. And also, we're just inviting everybody to join in with us. That's why we're having the Chautauqua. And we're going to keep doing Chautauquas and having fun for as long as it takes until the world disappears. <laughs> we're to let the light just stream through. Well, for me, what I started to see was that all my definitions of life were wrong too. Uh, because I think of life and then I think of alive and vibrant and, you know, but, but all, I started to realize I had a lot of associations with life being biological, with life being evolutionary, with life being growing. Uh, all those were false associations too. I remember one time I, I was listening to this course teacher teach uh, the course on tape. Some of you who, who know the course heard Ken Wapnick. And somebody from the audience said, what does the course teach about life on other planets. And he said, well, the Course says that there's no life on this planet. <laughs> I just got the biggest smile on my face. And, you know, once you start to, to go with that a bit, you know, I mean, I laughed like everyone, and then I started to say, okay, you're going to have to show me that one, because that's a big stretch, you know. But ultimately, you know, you got to say, take me there. you got to say to Spirit, I want to know life that's eternal. I want to know life that is never born, never dies. In fact, a couple days ago, it was David's biological birthday. Actually, the first email I got was simply these words. 
you were never born and you will never die. <laughs> and I said, yeah, now that's a greeting that I can relate to. As if we're going to celebrate the day that a body seems to come out of a womb. You know, it's like, well, I think we can, we can raise the bar a little bit when we start to forgive. Because when we start to forgive and release all of the heaviness of our concepts, including our biological concepts around life, and life is of the body, and life begins at birth, and life ends at death, and da 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 Once we forgive all that stuff, then we're really getting into the happiness of eternal life. In A Course in Miracles, Jesus says the world will end in laughter. <laughs> laughter. Now that's the way to go out. And that's what our life is. You know, not that we're laughing at anything. It's just the laughter that wells up in your soul. It's the Spirit's laughter. So for me, I have to admit it was, it was a big journey. You know, even when I went into this vegetarian study years ago and they were going to take, take my blood to test something out or whatever. But I, it was good practice. And someone sticking needles and poking around for veins. I, when I was growing up, I, they had to bring smelling sauce every time they would even try to take blood from the body of David. And so what did I do when I got into the spiritual journey? I went right at my fear, right at it. There's some kind of association in my mind about blood, that I can't handle blood. So what better way than to enroll in a vegetarian <laughs> study where they pluck your arm and they and the further the study goes, they whack it again, and they go in more and more. And, and if you're queasy about blood, that'll help you get over your blood associations. What's wrong with blood? Is it good? Is it bad? But really, is, is blood so bad? No, it's just our thoughts and our associations and our concepts around blood. And I've had experiences where I've seen people die. I had a raising the dead experience like Jesus had. Even that's no big deal. Why? Because there's no life on this planet. Really. I wasn't even blown away by a raising the dead experience. Because I knew there was something more. I knew that was just a symbol. Jesus coming, you know, out of the sepulcher, you know. Mm -hmm. So he did that 2,000 years ago. It was kind of a, an out of pattern experience. We don't have that every day. People coming out of graves. It got our attention. You know, but there's no need to build a religion of sacrifice and penance on one simple resurrection scene and, you know, to teach people that they're sinners. You know, we, we need to teach innocence. We need to teach original innocence. We don't need to teach sin and punishment. But you see, you start to realize that that was just like a little skit. His message was much bigger than that little skit, too. They make a big drama. They reenact it every year and every... You gotta go through Good Friday, and oh, and the clouds come, and you go, oh, Good Friday. I always wonder why it got so dark and cloudy on Good Friday. <laughs> Was it true? Did it really happen? It's so dark out here today. And Easter, yay! Why can't every day be Easter? Why can't we celebrate the resurrection 365 days a year? Why, why just have one day in April? <laughs> Let's do it all year. You know, that's what this is about. So it's really about eternal life. And it's just a different view of life. And it took me a lot of seeming just, okay, I give it over. All right, all right. I'm wrong about that too. Okay, okay, okay. But that's, that's how it works. <laughs> so what you are saying is that you are saying that everything is eternal. Yeah. So what you are saying is that everything is eternal. Nothing exists. Everything is in the correction of the mind. And spirit is real. Yeah. You, when you're connected to your source, then, then you really... There's nothing to get up about. <laughs> that's it. When you're in alignment, then no problems. <laughs>